I'm David Solomonoff, president of the Internet Society of New York, and we're here today at the Circumvention Tools Hackfest with Seamus Tui of the Commotion Project, which is a uh, wireless, uh, secure wireless mesh networking so uh, open source software project. And uh, can you tell us a little bit more about uh, your approach and, and what the project is doing? Uh, so Commotion Wireless, uh, unlike many other mesh networking projects, is not just about getting a specific uh, form factor of mesh networking. Uh, we were just talking a little bit earlier yeah. about different mesh networking projects that use things like Mesh Potato, where they are a specific device that you put on your roof, put in your window, uh, and mesh with your neighborhood. Commotion Wireless is trying to build a freeform package um, of open source tools that you can run on your Macintosh, your Linux, your PC, your Android phone, or your router. Mm -hmm. um, and almost any router, we use an open source software called OpenWRT, which helps us develop firmware for a variety of different routers. So you can take any router you have at home, load the Commotion bundle on it, mm -hmm. and turn that on, and you'll be meshing with your router. Load Commotion on your laptop, and you'll be meshing with your laptop. And you can route traffic from your phone to your laptop to your router to your neighbor's mm -hmm. router to their laptop to their phone. Right. So you could use, uh, say, uh, your Apple uh, MacBook, and that would not only it basically would function as a server, or rather as a router. And in addition to providing your access, you can share your bandwidth with uh, your friends and neighbors too. Right? Absolutely, it actually allows people to take what is a only used antenna for getting connectivity from someone else right. and turns you into a provider of connectivity right. and mm -hmm. provider of your own services. If you run a service on your laptop, like a game or a chat forum, something or website, right. or website right. mm -hmm. you can share just locally in this room, for instance, mm -hmm. with anyone around you, your website, by merely loading up Commotion, turning it on, and they can all connect to you as if you were a wireless router. Mm -hmm. They don't have to even have Commotion on their own laptops to connect to you. Uh -huh. Okay, And that's all encrypted? Well, so the, the larger idea behind Commotion is to create a secure networking platform. Mm -hmm. right. But what we want to do is make it compartmentalized. So you can turn on the encryption, you can turn mm -hmm. on the different layers of security, mm -hmm. or you can turn on less encryption and security. Mm -hmm. uh, what we found was that when you're dealing with a wireless router, they have a, a very limited amount of memory. So right. if you have a community like, we have a test network in Detroit right now, yeah. th that community needs more connectivity than they need security and encryption. Mm -hmm. Right now, because of the lack of infrastructure there, Connecting to the internet requires that you, in the case of Commotion, connect through, let's say, one or two different routers to get access to the internet. So you're doing like several hops before you get to the, the actual internet. Yeah. yeah. And so every hop you go, just like on the regular internet, every wire you pass through right. slows the speed slightly. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and even more dramatically when you're dealing with wireless connections, when you have trees and birds flying between it and just the shooting across a rooftop. And so what we're trying to do is have it so that you can add encryption if you need encryption. Mm -hmm. um, you can build up your node to be as secure or as insecure as you want it, more speed versus more security. Mm -hmm. uh, there's always that trade-off when you're dealing with right. security. Can you provision that so that if, uh, you can restrict how much bandwidth, say, your neighbor uses uh, if you're, you have limited resources and that type of thing? Can you throttle the amount that you choose to share and that mm -hmm. sort of thing? Yeah, we actually have a, a few different deployments where we have people who say, you can use half of my bandwidth, yeah, right, right. Um, or you don't use my bandwidth at night. Right. Um, and they can configure that through their firewall. And mm -hmm. it's just as easy as configuring your wireless router if you had two computers hooked up right. to your wireless network mm -hmm. um, without commotion itself. Mm -hmm. uh, because it runs off of such a common type of connectivity, it's running off of the interfaces we already have, mm -hmm. um, the tools are built just the same way. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay. And the next question, oh, so your, is your software now uh, readily available or is it still in development? Where, where, where are you with things? Well, so we have, um, right now we have the meshing software mm -hmm. fully available. Right. Um, you can get the, both the router software, any of the laptop software. Um, the laptop software and the routing software we're using right now, as well as the Android client, are all available using the OLSRD protocol. Uh, we hope to allow it to be opened up to whatever protocol a person wants to use. Can you tell us a little bit about the, uh, oh. the, right, the yeah, so OLSRD yeah. protocol? <laughs> um, so OLSRD is the Optimized Link State Routing Protocol. Mm -hmm. um, the D stands for a daemon uh, mm -hmm. because it runs in the background of your computer, right, right. Uh, much like a daemon. And so by using a specific protocol, you transfer your data in different ways. With a mesh network, when my laptop gets communications from your laptop, it actually has to process where does this go next? Does it go right. to the nearest router or does it go right. to... Which is something that was the, the challenge of developing mesh networking software is that uh, you never know, right? <laughs> what might <laughs> exactly. be the case. It's supposed to, and you want uh, particularly 
it's, uh, the benefit of mesh when it's working properly is the resilience and fault tolerance there. So, but the overhead, there's, or the, the, the technical you know, challenge, you would say, is for the software to keep going and checking and making sure that you know, I'm uh, using, connecting to this other router, is it still out there, you know, does it still have the same address and that sort of thing. So those are, I guess, challenges that, that this protocol needs to, to you know, address, basically. Right? Exactly, and different communities have come up with different protocols. Mm -hmm. um, OLSRD, the one that we use, we happen to have some developers in-house who are very familiar with it. Mm -hmm. That community is very, um, very talkative. Mm -hmm. uh, when we ask them questions, they respond back very quickly. They allow us to push some of our changes to their code up mm -hmm. to their actual code base because they like what we're doing with it. Mm -hmm. But the way we built Commotion is that you can actually take out OLSRD and bring in another routing protocol, mm -hmm. um, which is, you know, and there's a myriad of Batman and Robin and great names at that. Right. Um, you know, DVDA. Mm -hmm. Um, all of these different protocols are better and worse in different ways. They have strengths and weaknesses. Exactly. Yeah, right. um, and so we like OLSRD. It works great for community networks. Mm. One of our visions for Commotion is that, um, as we said with the encryption and the privacy enhancements in it, that people set up the network for their community. Mm -hmm. And if there is some sort of internet freedom crisis, you know, the internet gets turned off, right. um, or the power gets turned off and they have backup batteries on their mesh network, right. the, the security will be there. And they can use it if the internet gets turned off and they have to go to protest, or they yeah, right. have to do what they need to do, depending on the community that needs it. Mm -hmm. Um, and that requires that they have a protocol that works for them in both situations. We find mm -hmm. that OLSRD works great for community wireless when you're actually having a lot more traffic running through it, mm -hmm. as well as when there's less traffic mm -hmm. um, running through those nodes. So it works particularly well for both scenarios, which is why we use it. We hope to actually remove that completely and allow people to put whatever protocol they want in there. Mm -hmm. We're not there yet. Right. So the release right now is an OLSRD release. Um, it's running the Commotion release. You can go to our website, code commotionwireless.net or just commotionwireless.net and download the files directly. Mm -hmm. um, code will allow you to download, that's our developer site on the back end, it'll allow you to look at our wiki, see ways to customize it, make it to your own liking. Right, and also I assume that then you can get a uh, beta test uh, software Absolutely. if you need the cutting edge, mm -hmm. the and bleeding and edge. Exactly. Uh, and the source code's also right. available on the right. code site, so you can actually open up the source code itself Mm -hmm. Make sure we're doing what we say we're doing. Right. Uh, tinker with it. Add something to it. Send it back to us. We'll implement it or uh, we'll look it over. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, we'll at least look it over. Right, right. Uh -huh. That's good. Okay. Uh, what's the largest uh, commotion network that you're aware of? Uh, how many nodes? Right now, the largest commotion network um, is, I believe, 15 nodes. Uh, we have two larger commotion networks. Uh, one is a test bed that's being developed in Detroit. Right. It's where we do a lot of our throughput testing and yeah. our just kind of stress testing of the network, mm -hmm. um, and that actual region in Detroit, the Cass Corridor is what it's called, I believe has now uh, 13 nodes. Mm -hmm. um, we actually have active community members who are using that network as well just to get connectivity and to talk yeah. to each other. How many users uh, in that network? Then? You know, it, and it's hard to say. <laughs> it's hard to say and one of the fallbacks for running a network that's supposed to be secure is that we have to value our users' privacy. Right, right. So a lot of the data that we collect is more about the way the node, so the node is the individual wireless router we're running, uh -huh, okay. how the node is doing. Right. Um, is the node up? Is it down? Uh, you know, does someone knock it off? Is it getting intermittent power? Right. Um, you know, is there a rat chewing on the cord? Yeah, yeah. Uh, these kind of things that you <laughs> right. need to know about right. without right. actually looking at what are the users looking at? Right. Where are they going? Right. Um, how many users are accessing it in one right. place? Are they using it over and over again? Uh, we'd love this human interaction uh, data. We have to do a lot of it through surveying, though. Uh, mm -hmm. We have the ability, we have a splash page on that node, and we have the ability for them to email us and say, tell us about your experience. Right. We also have community members who are talking to the people who are using the network, who are talking about the network, who get a lot of that feedback from the user base. Mm -hmm. uh, but we try to stay a little bit um, away from that just because it violates the spirit of the project. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Even though they're a test network, we, you know, they're still valuable community members in that community. Right, right. We also have a network in DC where we're located. Uh, one of our employees, one of my coworkers, Preston, went out to his local neighborhood and put a node on his roof. He's like, well, we're doing this mission networking. I should have a node on my roof just to support. Right. And he was a lone node in the Mount Pleasant area. Uh, some community members saw that, he talked to some other community members, and it's actually a burgeoning community right now. They have, I believe, about 10 nodes up. I'm not sure. They keep putting up nodes every time I leave town, so I can never actually keep track <laughs> of how many there are. Right. And just uh, one neighborhood away over in the Columbia Heights neighborhood, our director Sasha lives. And so he's got a big old node on his house. The local hack space, uh, Hack DC, they just recently put up a node as well. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're in communication with a few different organizations around and a few different homes to try to connect these networks, mm -hmm. uh, which are you know, individual islands 
and then this larger community of Mount Pleasant. And we're hoping that that'll be the first definitely community-led um, mesh network, at least in DC, mm -hmm. uh, running on the commotion. Right. What um, kinds of, uh, how can people help you? Well, I mean, there's a lot of ways to help. One of the things that we're finding is that we have been focusing a lot on the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Putting a lot of nodes up, refining the way it works, making sure that your Mac book works with my PC, works with the router. Um, and so we've had the community members building us applications. Because almost anything runs on a mesh network that runs on the internet. Mm -hmm. All you need is a server, and a server is merely just a computer. Right. As I said, you could run on your laptop. Right. Um, but a lot of the finickiness of it is making sure it works on a mm -hmm. mesh network, is turning it on, having your friends use it, um, finding good ways to play with it, finding really awesome use cases for a mesh network. Mm -hmm. Because we find that a lot of the things that we need locally don't need to be hosted on Google services or on Amazon or on right. these servers off right. on third, you know, third parts of the world. But at the same time, a lot of these services are nicer if you can talk to, you know, my mother lives in California. I love being able to send her email. It wouldn't work over a mesh network. But we haven't yet found the use cases that are perfect for mesh networking. Um, we've seen in Pompeii they have a mesh network and they're doing some amazing things about sourcing groceries and artisan foods in their neighborhoods. And they built their own applications there. We'd love to hear feedback and ideas on what exactly are the needs that are local, that don't need to be farmed out to mm -hmm. Foursquare and Facebook and Twitter, but actually need to happen in the community and don't need to be either on those servers or need to not be on those servers. Um, a lot of the government services that we find that would be really useful to only have to be held in town and don't require money. Because one of the great things about mesh networking is you can take a, a phone with no service, no plan, a laptop that, and no internet connectivity, and not a single internet gateway in the entire city, and just have the devices. Have them talk to each other, you're saying. Right, exactly. Right, right. A local internet that doesn't require service plans or connectivity, just the power to run them. And uh, our roof routers have about the power of a clock radio, I believe. Um, so it's a very low power mm -hmm. infrastructure, but you could have a server that says, where are the potholes in my city? Um, where is the nearest you know, shelter? Where is the nearest food kitchen? Where can I get help today? Mm -hmm. Where can I get bread? You know, where can I find clothing? All those services that are local for people who maybe can't afford it in their connection. Mm -hmm. um, you know, where can I get you know, a welfare check? Where can I go for services and help? These are the kind of people who don't have access to the internet. Right, but once you, if you can just, get the backhaul to one node, then you can disseminate the very broad way the, yeah. uh, the internet connectivity too. And so, a laptop of five years ago can run the commotion project. Right, mm -hmm. right. right. Okay, is there anything else you'd like to add? Um, we, I mean, we always need developers. So if anyone oh, okay. is interested in mesh networking, I don't want to say we just need users. We do, yeah. uh -huh. okay. we love more people to, to right. play with commotion in the software. But right. no, that's, that's about it. Thanks a lot. Okay. It's a pleasure to meet you.